Hello group, Jeff here. Today I want to uh, show you a neat little tool that I found that uh, will help you collimate your SCT OTAs. One of the biggest problems that I've had to learn throughout the years was the best practices for collimation. And until I found this tool, uh, sometimes I was good at it, sometimes I wasn't. My biggest thing was trying to find the center of an out-of-focus star. It's a little tougher than you, than you can imagine. And just being a little bit off is, can mean all the difference in a good image or a bad image. So I have found on the interwebs a tool called Ailes Collimation Aid, and it is basically a, an overlay that you can put on top of Mellencamp Sky uh, to help you uh, with your collimation. So what I want to show you is I found a couple of uh, out-of-focus stars on the internet. One is definitely obvious, the other one isn't quite so obvious. They are both out of collimation. And I, I will show you with this, this aid, uh, how you can tell. So I'm going to switch over to my desktop. And let's get rid of this guy. And I have an out of collimated, or I'm sorry, a an out-of-focus star that definitely needs collimation. You can tell it's pushed up to the top left. And then I have another image of a star, out-of-focus star, that looks like we are collimated. So what I will do is uh, in put the overlay on top. And you can see you can move it around so that you can find where all these rings go. So what you would do is when you first start this, the rings are tight. They're in a tight circle. So what I'll do is I'll just kill it, start it again. And here's how, how it starts up. So what we want to do is the outer ring, I go out to here. I want to see the outer uh, fuzzy with the outer ring. So we're going to open this up. And we're going to kind of get it so that it's evenly. I think I might be just a little too big. Now that looks pretty good. Now the next ring, the inner ring, I want to grab one of these. So I'm going to open it up. And just make sure that when I move it, it is the same size, which it is. And then for the center, you want to be in here for the center. And that just might be a little too big. And then you also get an overlay for your screws. So you would move or rotate the numbers so that it would correspond to where your screws are on your Schmidt. And uh, what this allows you to do is when you stick your, like your finger in, you'll be able to tell which screw you need to turn uh, to start your collimation. 
And it doesn't matter what direction, you would just want to see turn it, and then if it goes the right way, you'd keep turning it. So the screws will be your guide, the screw numbers. So in this case, I happen to be off, this is pushed off to the top left. So what I would be doing is a combination. I would start with three, then go to two, and see how that how I can uh, get my center more in the center. And right now we are off pushed off to the top left. So after doing all of this, I'm just going to move this out of the way. We will get a star, an out of focus star that kind of looks like this. Now this looks to, if you look at it close, or not too close, you just look at it, it looks like this is a good collimation. But if we bring up the, the aid and get it centered, like so, you will see that now we're pushed even though it looked good, it's still a little high. And you can tell by the center is pushed up to this outer ring here. So if I make my center ring a little smaller, it might become a little more obvious for you. So right now we're still high. And you can tell right here that this ring kind of pushes up to the number three. So this is okay collimation, but it's not good collimation. So you would use the number three knob, and uh, that's where we're weighted towards the number three. So you would turn it whatever direction. It doesn't matter. You just turn it. And if, depending on how this looks, you either went the right way or the wrong way. And I have found that this tool, this aid, has saved me so much time because what I can do is during blue sky, I can find a bright star like Vega or Arcturus, any star that's really bright. I can collimate before I even start my session and get my collimation nailed. Uh, you can, the star will be bright enough that you can use either a Botnoff mask uh, or whatever you, whatever aid you want to use to get your star in focus. And then uh, back off a little bit so that you get the star out of fo focus. And then uh, away you go. And I have found that this takes me, now that I have good collimation, I can check it, spot check it like every other session uh, just to make sure that my collimation hasn't, uh, hasn't moved. So I hope you guys and gals find this uh, tool. I'll put a link below for where I got the, the aid and uh, I hope you found this useful. This will work for Meads, uh, Celestron scopes, any uh, SCT scope that uh, has a uh, corrector plate with uh, a secondary that's located on the corrector with three uh, collimation screws or knobs. In my case, I have knobs. Works great. See you on the group.